VSCPR and the octahedral geometry for steric number 6. This is VSCPR part 5. Okay, so just continuing through our list of basic molecular geometries, we've been looking at each one and looking at any derivatives when lone pairs are added to the central atom. And now we're finally down to the octahedral geometry for steric number 6. All of the others have been covered in previous videos. Okay, so back to our table that we're becoming quite familiar with. We are down here at steric number 6 with our octahedral geometry. And we can see that we have four other geometries to discuss that are associated with the steric number 6. All right, so let's take another look at the basic geometry. And we have six bonded atoms to a central atom. The basic molecular shape is octahedral. Now all of these positions in the octahedral geometry, all of them are equivalent. Okay, so we don't have axial or equatorial positions to think about in this geometry. But what we have here is, here's the central atom, and we have a plane of four atoms that cuts through the center of this molecule. So these two atoms are going behind the screen, these two are coming out at you, and then we have two perpendicular atoms that are perpendicular to this plane. Okay? Now all the bond angles are 90 degrees, and this of course is the octahedral geometry. Now, we have four others, and let's look at just a summary of them, and you can see each one, we're just adding an additional lone pair. So we have a square pyramid, square planar, when we add two lone pairs, and notice that they are 180 degrees apart from each other, that's important, okay? T-shaped, and then a linear geometry as well. So remember, there are no equatorial or axial positions in an octahedral geometry, so it's tempting to start thinking that way, but there, all those positions are equivalent. So all of the bond angles are 90 degrees. Now, when you add lone pairs to an octahedral geometry on the central atom, you can really pick any position. Okay, now again, I put it right here at the bottom, but that's because it makes it really easy to see this square pyramid shape. And all of these bond angles are less than 90, so they're all squeezed back because this lone pair takes up more than his share of the room. Okay? Now the square planar ge geometry has 90 degree bond angles. And notice that the lone pairs were placed 180 degrees apart from each other. And they always need to be placed 180 degrees apart from each other. Now when you do that, then you end up with repulsions that cancel out. And so that's why we're back to 90 degree bond angles. So basically this is a square plane that is coming in and out of the screen. And so that's where this shape gets its name. All right, so the next one, if we add a, yet another lone pair, and again, now you can pick any position, all right? Notice these two are 180 degrees apart, and then we added another one, okay? That makes a T-shape. So here's your T-shape. So these two atoms that are up and down, and then one sticking out. And these bond angles are also less than 90. So this one's less than 92, even though it doesn't look like it. All right, so bond angles are distorted to less than 90. And finally, a linear shape. When we have four lone pairs on the central atom, they go 180 degrees apart from each other. And that leaves two atoms that are bonded 180 degrees apart. And all of those repulsions cancel out also, so we end up with a linear geometry. So remember, we have a linear geometry for steric number 2, for steric number 5, and also for steric number 6. All right, so let's do a quick example. So draw the Lewis structure for this molecule and determine the steric number, name the molecular geometry, identify bond angles, including distortions if present. Okay, so the Lewis structure. So you should check your Lewis structure and make sure that it matches. Let's count up the steric number here. So we have our lone pair. And we have one, two, three, four, five bonded atoms. So steric number six. 
that's good. We're going to use the basic octahedral geometry. And when we draw that out, again, I put the lone pair at the bottom so that we could see our square pyramid. You don't have to do that. You could put it here or here. Just make sure that you can see the shape. But all these bond angles are less than 90 degrees because that lone pair is taking up more than its share of the room. Those repulsions are more severe coming from that lone pair on these bonding pairs in the molecule. Okay, and when we go ahead and name the geometry, it's going to be a square pyramidal geometry. All right, and additional examples will be posted separately.